Hello there gorgeous gamers and welcome back to Pure Play TV and we've got our review for Open Country, a survival hunting simulator that isn't really one or the other. And it's kind of, well, watch on and see for yourself. Open Country starts strong, playing as the everyman leaving the bright light city behind to pursue a dream of becoming one with nature, the game starts off slow and builds up nicely. Here's how to hunt, here's how to craft, speak to this person to get your missions, and sell your stuff to this lady over here to get some money. It's all your standard hunting sim fare, and at the beginning, it works. Early on, the game introduced crafting, and how it works in open country, through one of the opening quests, and initially, everything was as I expected. For this mission, there were resources everywhere, and everything you need is to hand. Find these resources, bash them together and voila, here's your shelter, bandage or stone axe. Now off your pop, give it a go yourself. All good in theory, except at this point, I'm pretty sure the game became sentient. I could swear that every time I went to build something, the game would know exactly what I was trying to do and the resources I needed would somehow vanish from the map, as if the game was playing some kind of cruel trick on me. I spent what felt like hours looking for twigs, to the point that, in the end, I just gave up. In other games, I could have taken my axe and chopped down a tree, but here, the axe is bloody useless. You can swing it at a tree all you want, but the tree doesn't give two twigs. In the end, I just ignored the crafting system as much as possible, because it genuinely feels broken, and very, very annoying. Ignoring this very obvious issue, Open Country still plays relatively well. The mission system works, and there was never really a time when I felt like I was wandering around aimlessly, unsure of what to do or where to go. But these missions are often fetch quests, and, yeah, in their nature, quite boring. There is a decent skill tree where you can spend tokens, gained from experience, to boost all kinds of skills, from weapons to survival to crafting. Getting from point A to point B can be fun too, but this also gets tedious quickly, and you do it a lot. So much that I would say, open country is more of a walking simulator than a hunting one. This is all well and good, and most of the time the map is open enough to encourage a bit of exploration, but sometimes there are annoying dead ends or obstacles that mean you have to backtrack to get to where you're going. There are also some comfort systems to manage, in that you can get cold, hungry and thirsty, with each having an adverse effect should they get too low. These are just some of the things that work in open country, there is a lot more. If you want a simpler experience, these can be adjusted in the difficulty settings if you want. This was something I wish I'd tinkered with a bit more, because often I would overlook these meters and I would end up dying of thirst. Hunting in open country is something else that you can ignore entirely if you wish. The only times I went out specifically to hunt something was when a mission told me to do so. If hunting is your thing, then there's plenty to keep you busy. You can buy gear in the store, such as calls and whistles, to attract your prey, or even change the colour of your clothes depending on what animal you're hunting. Taking out your rifle after tracking down an animal is what hunting is all about, and Open Country does a decent job with the shooting mechanics. Aiming down the sights feels solid, and the gunplay is fairly decent. Shooting feels satisfying, with enough camera wobble and recoil to feel like a real challenge without being unfair. Hitting an animal from a distance after tracking it through the landscape is enjoyable without being gory or graphic. Open Country does have the foundations of a good game. There's a lot going on, from crafting to hunting, exploring to leveling up, and building out your character. The problem is that the core systems don't work well enough together to feel satisfying. This is a huge shame, because I really started out enjoying my time with Open Country. The maps on offer feel huge, and exploring the wild is really cool, and weirdly relaxing, considering I'm out with a rifle strapped to my back and getting attacked by the odd wolf but it soon starts to sour. There isn't one major issue with the game, just a series of smaller ones that soon build up to be bigger than they need to be. I was a hunter for a few weeks and it felt good, but I'm happy to say that's me finished for the season. And that is the end of this review. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. If you did, show the love. Go on down below, drop a comment, like if you haven't already, subscribe, and give the bell icon a nudge so that you don't miss any future videos.
The Info Box has got our social media channels, website links and supporters links where you can support the team if you can. I've been Chris, you've been gorgeous and I'll see you on the next one. Until then, bye bye.